one dollar microscope. It's such a great tagline. Immediately you're like, that doesn't seem possible. Like you're making something up. This is a toy. This is fake. This is a scam or a gimmick. And then you start using it. You get such immediate results. Ease of use and its price point is just very, very compelling. what can we do with a dollar? And we chose that number before we made the instrument, asking ourselves if it was this price, how many people might actually have it in their pocket? The kind of relationship most college students or school students have with microscopes are typically going to your school laboratory and peering under a scope which is poorly aligned and being used by many people you don't know the optics, you don't know how it works, and that's a tragedy because, you know, you don't get a chance to have a microscope of your own to explore. The context we started this was with diagnostics. We've been working a lot on looking at the role of microscopy in diagnostics. From the very beginning, we started talking about uh, different possibilities of how to make a low-cost microscope. Um, originally, we were thinking about a malaria diagnostic tool. And it sort of dawns on you at some point of time, you realize you're out in the field, in the middle of nowhere, and you want capabilities very much like what you would like to have in the lab, both for life sciences research and for tinkering around. On one hand, it's an inexpensive microscope. It opens up the microcosmos to you. So that's absolutely terrific. But you need to actually use this at a quality level and not at a mere stamp collecting level. You start off that way, you start off with your curiosity. But through your curiosity, it opens science. It had to be portable and very, very cheap so you could carry it around. It had to have capabilities that we commonly associate with standard microscopes. And we move around. But it also needed to be very approachable. That's why we asked people to make it. It is a really revolution for the life science because generally microscopes are really bulky, heavy, and they're really expensive. And since it's portable device, it's uh, very good for uh, taxonomist. We can easily take it anywhere we like and find anything that, that is unknown for us. Most of the kids have to rely on pictures. Now, since it is really portable, we can show him anywhere. And how I feel like a taxonomist, I have a microscope in my pocket. Uh, it's all about, you know, inspiring um, children to think differently about the world around them, to think differently about themselves, and to give a tool for them to have have a chance to express their curiosity. अभी अभी बच्चे आपको एक चीज अच्छा लग गया वो आप देखना चाहते हैं उसका कैसा होता है तो फिर आपके पास तो माइक्रोस्कोप होगा नहीं हाथ में तो पॉकेट में अगर वो होता है तो इजी होता है देखने के लिए छोटी बच्ची को भी अगर हम समझाएंगे तो वो फटक से यूज कर पाएंगे and then I could ask, how many beats per second? How many Just because it's uh, low cost, very low cost, it's not a novelty and it's not a toy. It's actually a scientific and educational tool that just happens to be very cheap. One of the experiments I do in physics is to study wrinkling of films. I have to study how it behaves under uh, pressure and I have to see it under the microscope. And the mount for that is 2 kgs and I cannot put it on a normal microscope because it would damage it. So Foldscope being light and easy to use and easy to carry, I can really put it on uh, things and I can uh, put uh, pressures and strains in real time and then see how it behaves in real time. 
Egypt. And this is dated to around 2,900 years before present. And these are impressions which have been made by the potters of that period, which we call the Neolithic period, uh, with the help of creepers. Once you can identify the type of uh, you know, uh, impressions here, we can image those impressions, then we can identify the type of plant. So that is what you know, I am attempting to do just now. I am doing algae study on our pools and the bills. We have to collect samples uh, from the field to lab. Sometimes some living uh, biology is lost or it is somewhat modified because of the artificial environment. With full scope that uh, it is a pocket microscope, we can go to the field and we can observe everything in very lively form and immediately after collection. It will be uh, very beneficial to my students as well as my teaching skill. Everybody's microscopes should work exactly the same way. If it's not working, you just follow the steps back and you do it again. It's something that you put together so hopefully you have the capacity to fix it. हम जो आप लोगों ने मैडम जो सिखाया वो थोड़ा थोड़ा हम सीख लिया और देखने में बहुत अच्छा लगा है और उसमें डाल के जो फलों का थोड़ा थोड़ा डेल लिया और पानी डाल दिया उसका अच्छा बहुत बड़ा बड़ा दिख रहा है छोटा अलग चमन और बहुत बड़ा बड़ा दिखता है और बहुत अच्छा लगा है देखने के लिए no community aspect where you know you lay these instructions out you hand these to people and already from the very first step they're building these things together they're looking at it together they get very excited together and they talk I don't know let's see every single person has this eyes wide wonder part of it the most important goal is to make people curious the message that we are trying to give out is that science is a process. Everybody is a scientist. Kids are starting to realize that biology happens outside the biology lab. I like to leave it open-ended. There's no wrong way to use this, really. You are limited by yourself and the people around you. It's been a wonderful opportunity for the students as well as uh, for us. They have learned about uh, you know, telescope or microscope in the curriculum, but uh, the full scope is a very new concept. I hope they will gain interest in uh, studies as well and it will help them explore the world uh, which is uh, you know, in and around them. I actually enjoyed making this full scope. I mean, it's so economical. It's like awesome. You can magnify up to such, such large extent. I had a great time. Today I will go home and I will try to find some more organisms and uh, uh, around my garden and I will uh, really video it up and I will upload it in the website also. If you have a project idea in mind, all you have to do is send us an email at foldingmicroscope at gmail.com or just go to the website foldscope.com and write a community that you would work with or what would you do? Sometimes the community could just be your own child or sometimes it could be a fantastic group of people that you work with. So for the full scope to succeed, what we need is individual curiosity channeled into a collective interaction. I mean, it would be really fantastic for farmers, for example, to be able to look at the pests they have, send us photographs of these pests, so that we can know that these are the kinds of pests coming and so on and so forth. It would be absolutely wonderful. Similarly for healthcare workers. The final aspect is, I mean, this is about microscopy, but this is also about frugal innovation of the highest technological quality. Can we learn from this and have more of this in our situation? And I think we can. We have a very simple vision. Every single kid in the world should carry a microscope in their pocket. That's two billion kids. That's a lot of microscopes. It's going to take a lot of time, effort, energy, funds. Mm -hmm.